So in this video presentation, we're going to look at the skills required in order to put a gland onto a steel wire armoured cable or SWA cable. This will be the first time my learners have actually used SWA cable, so we're just going to be using an off cut. As we move forward, we'll see how to fasten this to brick and block surfaces, as well as the cable tray, and then be making the gland off when it's in situ. But this will be the first time we've had a go at making off the end, so therefore we're doing an off-cut cable on a bench, and we've seen what skills are required in order to terminate the gland onto the end of the SWA cable. So let's see how we're going to start that process. So first of all, we need to know what type of steel or armoured cable we've got. And as always, it's the number of cores first. So in this case, we've got a three core, so three conductors within the actual construction of the steel armour cable. And then we need to know their size. In this case, they are 2.5 millimetre squared. And that's all three conductors are of the same size. There's no reduced conductor size as we often have in twin and CPC cables. So we've got a three core, 2.5 SWA cable. And next, we need to look at the gland pack to confirm it's the correct gland for the cable that we've selected. On the back of the gland pack, we have a grid matrix which suggests the size of the conductors. So we've got 1.5, 2.5, 4, 6, 10, 16. And then it goes across and looks at the number of conductors within the actual SWA cable, whether it be two, three, four, etc. And we're gonna match this gland to the actual cable that we're using. So as we look down here at 2.5 and scroll across to three core, it says 20S. So in other words, our gland is gonna be a 20S. And in this case, we've selected a 20S. 20 for the size of hole that will need to be knocked out of the box, and S for the smaller gland body. They do a 20, which again goes in a 20 mil hole, but has a slightly bigger gland body and gland nut. So we've got the right size gland for the cable. Let's see what's in that gland pack next. So once you've opened up the gland pack, you'll see what's inside. We have got two shrouds, two locking nuts, two gland nuts, two gland bodies, and two earthing rings within the actual gland pack. So they give you enough to terminate both ends of a steel wire armoured cable. So just to recap, two shrouds, two lock nuts, two gland nuts, two gland bodies, and two earthing rings in the actual gland pack itself. And we're gonna look at how we're gonna make those off onto one end of our steel wire armoured cable. Let's do that next. So before we start the terminating process itself, we want to give ourselves a realistic length at termination end. So if we take a consumer's unit, and I like to have the cable go beyond the consumer unit, the consumer unit length again. So if this steel armor was being installed into this enclosure, we're going to want that as an approximate length for the point of which we start the termination. To make that a little easier for our students first time out, I'm just going to put a little ring of tape around here in order that we know the length we're working with, but also it may aid us in getting a clean cut when we go with a hacksaw as part of the terminating process of the gland itself. So we've got our length set, and we're now ready to look at actually fitting the gland to the SWA or steel wire armoured cable in the next part of the presentation. So I'm gonna take one of my shrouds first, I'm gonna insert it onto the end of the SWA cable and pull nice and firmly down. Hopefully you can see the area in which the cable is and the area in which it isn't. I wanna cut round the top part, but making sure the shroud has a nice tight fit to the SWA cable. So I'm gonna go in the slightly lighter topped area here. Make a little mark with my knife. Got the luxury of a bench. Press nice and firm with my knife. Hopefully take off the end and then I can slide it onto my SWA cable and you can see it won't slide down, so just pull it down onto the actual cable itself. And we fitted the shroud first. So that's the first thing we'll do is fit the shroud, and then we're going to look at the skills required to fit the actual gland itself. Next, I'm going to take a junior hacksaw, and I'm going to hacksaw around the top here of the tape as best I can, trying to keep it as square as I possibly can, nice and firm in with the hacksaw all the way round in order that I can remove the outside PVC and break away the steel wire armoured underneath. What tends to happen is students are really vigorous on the top part of it and then just give it a little bit of a wipe round the back with their junior hacksaw and they become very difficult to break off. So we need to make sure that when we go round that we get nice firm strikes all the way round the SWA itself. Following the tape line, which is there as best we can to aid us for our first SWA end, but nice and firm into those steel armorings. Don't go all the way through, because if we go all the way through, obviously we'll damage the conductors beneath, but it's a skill to develop as we go. How hard can we press with our hacksaw blade in order to get well into the SWA armoring and not through it and into the conductors itself? So see how that's gonna go.
So hopefully I've gone all the way around the cable itself, pretty square and fairly well into the armour in itself. So the next stage when I remove the outside PVC, hopefully we can break off these steel armourings with relative ease. So my next task is to remove this outside PVC using my knife, holding firmly onto the armoured cable itself. I'm going to run my knife out along the cable length and then remove it like so. So we've got the cable outside PVC removed and now I'll inspect the end here just to confirm that I've caught all the steel wire armour in before the next process. You have got a little bit of an option if you've missed one or two of them just to go in and brush against it with your hacksaw once again. But it looks like I've got most of them, or all of them actually, on the way round. So I'm ready for the next stage. So the next stage is to take four or five of these steel wire armour ends at a time just gently unwind them off the cable itself and then gently rock them backwards and forwards and hopefully they will just work hard and, and break away from the base where we've hacksawed it and they come off. Take four or five more, Maybe a few too many there and again just gently work against them if they break away, a few more. and once again just work them off until they're broken away. Okay, so they're all away. We can see a nice clean end here, okay? None of the actual armorings are hooking over. Okay, they're all nice and straight, so we're ready to move on to the next stage of putting the gland on. So next, I'm going to put on my gland nut, making sure the threads in the gland nut are pointing upwards. So we slide that on and keep it out of the way. And next we're going to have to work out how much of the PVC we're going to remove to expose the SWAs themselves. We've got to get it so they, and I'll call it the thimble part, this part here, the serrated edge, pins underneath the SWA itself, allowing us to tighten onto the threads above using the nut, the gland nut that we've just put on. So we need to make sure that we don't take too much of the PVC off because obviously when we throw the shroud back into its original position upright, we obviously don't want to see the SWAs poking underneath. So we've got only a very small amount of area here of which we can remove the PVC and not be seen when the shroud gets put back into place. So in this position here, I'm probably going to come about a centimetre, 10 mil below the taped area, and I'm going to run round with my knife in that area here. We can be nice and firm with our knife as we go around now this PVC here because we won't penetrate through the SWA, the steel wire armour in here. So nice and firm with our knife all the way round. And then take our knife and we can remove that part next. Popping that off, okay? So we've exposed the steel wire armoured which we're going to position our gland underneath those armorings in this section here. The armorings can be pinned here and the gland nut will come up to make sure we can get these sprayed open in order to drop our gland in in the next stage. So what we're going to do next is take our gland with what I call the thimble part or the serrated edge down and we're going to put it onto the end of our cables like so and we're going to wind this open in order that we spray this SWA, the armour in here, open to drop this on the inside. So this thimble part here will drop on the inside here. It doesn't want to go beyond the thread, so it wants to stop at the end of what I call this thimble part, the serrated edge, and then we can bring the nut up to match. It's going to be difficult now to keep my arms out of the way in order to show you this, but I'll show you as best I can how I'm going to wind this open and drop it in in the next part. Okay, so I've got gland body here, gland nut here, and I'm going to wind it open and just drop my gland in underneath the SWA itself. It's quite a firm rotation as I go round, okay, so I'm going to bring it up and round quite firmly and then just drop my gland in itself. So let's see if I can do that. So firmly round and then just drop my gland in. So what I'm trying to do is make sure that the SWAs are in the section which I call the thimble, the serrated part. Okay, so that's it. So I just did a nice firm wind and just dropped it into position. What I do next is I pull it out from fully inserted. I just pull it back a fraction and allow the nut to come up to meet the threads. 
making sure they don't cross thread. And then I push it back down. Those threads have started. So I push back down. There's force now going back down my hand, pushing the, the gland itself downwards. So it's all the way in the armor in. And then I just wind it up with my fingers like so. And then I'm ready to tighten this off using a set of spanners. Let's see that in the next stage. So I've got two spanners and both ends I've got 22 mil on, the other end being 20. So I'm going to use the 20 mil ends and I'm going to have one spanner on the actual nut itself and the other spanner is going to be on the actual gland body itself. And I'll try and keep myself out of the way. And what I'm going to end up doing is holding the one for the gland body with a spanner and tighten off the actual nuts. I'm bringing it back up. I'm not going to twist this one, I'm going to twist the gland nut in order to tighten it onto the gland body. Let's see if I can do that and keep myself out of the way at the same time. So I'm in position, ready to tighten off the nut itself, holding the body, and we're tight and the actual gland nut, holding the gland body in a tight position, and bring that one up until it's super firm. So if that stays there, I've probably got a tiny bit more of a turn in order to make sure it's super tight. One more turn. So pull it round so you can see what I'm doing. And then that's it, that's locked off super tight. We always use spanners at my college because if we don't, we shave off the brass parts of the body if we were to use adjustable grips. So I know in industry often you see people using adjustable grips, but it will shave off all the, the brass parts of the body and we'd like to reuse these again, so therefore we're using spanners. So what we've done is, gland body's been held into position and we've tightened off the gland nut in order to secure the steel wire armoured in the actual gland body itself. So next stage will be removing this outside PVC in order to expose the conductors in the next part of the presentation. So what we're going to do, about 10 to 15 mil away from the body itself. The body itself will be connected to earth, so we don't want the conductors to rub against the actual body in case we get a fault to earth. So we're going to come up about 10 to 15 mil. I'm going to take our knife and score gently round, not too firm now, because obviously the next layer of PVC, in this case thermosetting PVC, will be the insulating material around the conductors. So I've scored round and I'm going to see if I can just open the flex so we open it out and hopefully this will just pull away from the conductors. I'm going to twist it as I go, so just giving it a little twist as I pull away. And hopefully we expose our three conductors. So there we have our three conductors exposed. We've got about 10 to 15 mil of insulation still around here. And we've exposed our conductors, which have insulation around the actual conductors themselves of thermosetting PVC, which we've discussed in the classroom. So we've exposed our conductors now. It's a case now of fitting into an enclosure with a 20 mil hole, locking off it using a lock nut, but ensuring that the earthing ring for me sits on the outside. So that would be the next thing to go on earthing ring into our enclosure followed by the nut on the inside. This video presentation really is all about making off our first ever SWA gland and using the correct technique to do so. Before I finish I will need to check that none of the steel wire armors themselves have crossed over so I need to rotate all the way around and ensure that none of them have missed so gone underneath the actual gland body itself. So as I rotate around you can see that they've all gone in so none have missed and none have crossed over. So that's the steel wire armoured gland hopefully almost complete. Gland is on, gland is super tight, conductors have now been exposed. It's as far as I need my learners to go with their first ever SWA gland. I hope this video has been some help. Mm -hmm.